while economies world over are recovering from the COVID effect and the Russia-Ukraine conflict, we are now facing a new situation, a new crisis, Israel-Hamas conflict. Today, with markets interlinked with each other, ripple effect of conflicts in any part of the world is felt everywhere. This is also true for the energy space, where the entire value chain can be impacted. In this episode of Energonomics, we discuss the direct and indirect impact of the current situation on the energy sector, particularly oil and gas sector. Geopolitical tensions have their impact on oil and gas se sector, the producers as well as the consumers. We saw this happening in the Russia-Ukraine conflict and its impact on the oil and gas prices. However, the impact of Israel-Hamas conflict will be different. Unlike Russia, Israel is a very modest producer of energy. If the war spreads towards other parts of the West Asia, oil and gas production will be impacted. There will be effect on the supply side and result in price implications. As Prashant Vashisht, Senior Vice President and Co-Group Head Corporate Ratings, Ikra Limited puts it, while the currently affected regions do not produce oil, this conflict has raised geopolitical risk premium on oil, resulting in rising prices. However, if the conflict spreads, supplies may be affected as the Middle East region or West Asia produces almost a third of the global supplies. Almost 20% of the global oil supply would be impacted if the Strait of Homas is affected. I asked Swasti Rao to explain the situation to me as the impact or implications of the situations are not restricted to the country or countries in conflict too. It has its ripple effect. And this is what Swasti said. I think it's a very conceptual question with respect to what triggers, you know, these kind of uh, upheavals. So I think, um, well, on the one hand, um, uh, I mean, I think we all understand somewhere that we are, uh, I think, witnessing this era of poly crises, and we were in the middle of uh, an unfinished project of recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. And just when things were started to getting better, uh, you know, there was a Russian war in Ukraine and that everybody thought will end in five days and not that it did not end, it went on forever. It's already, it's not very soon, it'll be entering its second year and God knows how long it'll go. Uh, our assessment is that perhaps it will go on even longer. And just when the rest of the world was limping back to more normalcy and when, you know, the inflationary pressures were getting, uh, so to say, more smoothened out, then suddenly you had this, uh, un, you know, unprecedented attack on Israel. So obviously, on the one hand, I do see that there is the entire global order is undergoing this, uh, you know, this very ambivalent, uh, so to say, phase where there is a lot of complexity and a lot of uncertainty. So while uh, we cannot reduce its complexity, uh, immediately what we can do is that we can perhaps try and analyze these things better to try and uh, sort of reduce the uncertainty around them. But to say that there is anybody who has, uh, uh, you know, a complete explanation or an understanding of why these things are happening or what is really triggering these things, I think these are larger, uh, you know, socio-political, historical questions rooted in a lot of identity conflicts are uh, that seriously is something that I don't really cover directly but yes uh, those are things uh, that bring about the rise and fall of world orders and what we are witnessing right now is a world order which is in flux so by the time things will uh, smoothen out a little bit we would have definitely entered a kind of a new world with newer power you know equations and relations and uh, you know perhaps we would be analyzing uh, that then so let's wait and watch what comes our way first it was covid then russia ukraine war and now israel hamas conflict where are we headed what everybody is worried about is that what is it going to do to the oil markets what is it going to do to the inflationary pressures that were being felt all over the world and uh, 
just recently there was this uh, meeting you know that uh, that was done uh, i think um, i think the imf recently had its meeting and uh, there everybody was only talking about this one thing that of course that is a humanitarian disaster that is a, a you know heartbreaking casualty and death toll and all of that but the real fear which is going to be felt all over the world will come from how the crude oil so to say you know will behave the global critical infrastructure is also extremely vulnerable and just as the world is becoming more militarized the world is spending more money on militarizing and protecting its assets and critical infrastructure through military deployments i mean we have had what we saw um, you know in the wake of the russia ukraine war the north stream the attack on the north stream too you know which was really a, a multi billion dollar project uh, okay and just as uh, i think everybody was reeling from the economic cost that it had incurred uh, just the next day in fact i think the very few hours after hamas attacked israel uh, you know uh, at the supernova festival at 6:30 local time in the morning uh, just a few days few hours after that uh, you know there was a critical infrastructure damage reported uh, in europe again in you know in the northeastern part of europe and there is a baltic connector pipeline which was a bidirectional pipeline so it carried uh, you know um, gas back and forth uh, between finland and estonia that was damaged and uh, that pipeline costed about 300 million euros so all of these costs are also hidden in what we call the poly crisis and uh, i mean the 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 i would say the situation really looks bleak and in terms of how to contain it i think what is really very clear is that what everybody would be doing and all the diplomatic powers should be really focusing their diplomatic instruments okay so to say in trying to contain the conflict because i was reading certain reports which talked about scenario building and they already discuss scenarios on uh, what the so called you know the, the the latest crisis in the middle east would entail for say the energy markets in the world and uh, you know the 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 scenarios were very clear that uh, you know there would be a problem in terms of the oil markets and all the you know fluctuation out there but if the conflict is able to be contained uh, between israel and palestine and gaza and hamas okay this prob probably would be a situation with the least amount of damage if it becomes more proxy if it turns to lebanon and syria with more proxies coming in uh, you know the damage would be greater and if god forbid it actually turns a kind of a direct confrontation between israel and iran which is of course uh, the bigger power out there in the region which is supporting hezbollah as the proxy then it would be really very bad for the global economy this situation is a concern for consumers like india as there is a impact on energy prices i asked vandana hari to explain to me what it implies for the energy sector particularly oil and gas prices we've seen a risk premium creep into prices as well because although the israel hamas conflict has not impacted any oil or gas supply from the middle east it's happening on the doorstep of major oil and gas producers in the middle east so in situations like this and especially when um the conflict is, seems to be spiraling out of control in situations like these the market has to factor in uh a deterioration of the situation and even the worst case scenarios now in this case the worst case scenario looks pretty bad you know that region produces uh nearly 23 million barrels per day of oil 23% of of global uh demand essentially you know major producers like saudi arabia iran iraq kuwait oman all of those in in that region so look as of now um of course the hope as well as the expectation is that uh sanity will prevail uh countries will remain restrained uh, these major oil and gas producers will not get drawn into the conflict and supply will not be affected but the market doesn't uh, always uh, behave uh, based on you know whatever is the hope uh, it has always to needs to factor in the fear as well so so what about countries like india i see at least two major problems richa one is of course when prices rise as a as a result of a fear premium even though no supply is is affected the premium is what consumers end up paying the fear is what consumers end up paying for so so that is going to happen we see prices uh, 
have been elevated since last uh, week. And if this festers the conflict as it seems to be poised to do, uh, you know, prices could remain high for the foreseeable future, even though no production is impacted, right? So India is going to pay much more for the, for, the, for the oil. The other is just the uncertainty, because as a consumer country, whether it's the government or whether it's the oil company or even the households that are trying to budget for how much expenditure they ought to lay out for their energy, uh, it's just become impossible. You know, we had COVID, then we had the Ukraine war, and now we have this. So we've just been hurtling from one crisis to another, which makes uncertainty the only certainty. And that's a very difficult environment to operate in, whether you are the, you are a policymaker, a, comp a corporate, uh, or an individual. India has done very well in that, in, in taking charge, taking full responsibility. Um, Richard, we're also in, in an environment, and I would say almost an era now, uh, which is, uh, you know, every country has to look after its own interests, safeguard its its own interests. Uh, and, you know, you may say that is unfortunate, but we are moving away a little bit from the sort of globalization to more nationalization, to more national interest and to, to safeguarding self self-interests. And, uh, you know, to that extent, I think India is doing quite well. In the current situation, does the price cap on Russian crude still exist? Does it still exist? So yes, on paper, very much so. And until and unless the G7, US and EU say that we are officially lifting the cap, it will very much remain in place. And again, I don't see them lifting the cap as long as the Ukraine war uh, and invasion is, is continuing. So yes, it does. But in practice, what has happened is that it has become quite ineffective. So if the U.S. contends that the aim of the cap was to uh, crimp Russian oil revenues to make it more difficult, or if not difficult, to make Russia pay more for transporting the oil, which in turn uh, means lesser revenue from the, for the Kremlin. So in that sense, it has probably uh, may had an impact because had the Ukraine war not had the uh, price cap not in, been in place, uh, Russia would have continued to sell its crude at the levels it used to fetch in the market. So Russia is definitely getting less revenue. So it has worked in that sense. But as far as the consumers are, are concerned, the main crude consumers of Russia now are, of course, China and India. Um, it has created some problems, especially I do understand for Indian refiners having to jump through more hoops. Uh, some banks are being extra cautious, uh, even though, again, let's be clear that the price cap only applies if the crude is being shipped using a Western shipping company or that shipping is using Western services or the trade has used Western services such as uh, insurance or trade finance and so on. Today, tensions between two countries is not just restricted to their boundaries. It has a ripple effect and trickles down across countries, across boundaries. Most of the conflicts have a direct impact on energy sector, making it important for countries like India to carve out their own path, backed with political will, of course. Does this mean we are headed towards a more nationalized approach to protect our economies. I leave you with these thoughts. My detailed conversations with Swasti and Vandana are available in the links below for you to hear.